Hi everyone. Um, I wanted to do a video today over probably my most requested subject, which is honey jars. Um, I wanted to share with you a few of my tips for working them and just the items I prefer to use. Um, the first thing you're ultimately would be um, you need a jar, obviously some sort of vessel. Um, I prefer to use these. They have a metal lid. Um, they run about $3 in your average craft store. Um, they give you lots of room because I like to add things to mine as I go along to sort of keep feeding it. Um, so you need your jar. Um, you also need, um, you're gonna need the items to go in it, which I'm gonna talk to you about, of course and um, your candle for the top. I put a plate under mine because um, when you burn candles on top of them, um, occasionally you get some overflow. It depends on the type of candle you're using. If you're using a high quality candle or a beeswax candle, you're not gonna get, um, you're, you're not gonna get that piles of wax running all over it. Um, I know a lot of workers prefer to use tea lights on top of their jars because they don't like the mess and they like to be able to get in the jar and they like to be able to shake the jar. Um, I don't like using tea lights. I don't like the, I don't like anything about them. I think it's a cheap wax. Um, I don't like the little plastic or the little metal cups they come in. I think it's a waste. It's bad for the environment. Um, I just, I really don't like them. Um, so that is not something I personally would ever use. I just don't find them to be very traditional. I just, I, people were, using tea lights on the tops of their honey jars, you know, 200 years ago. So I just can't do it for me. It's just not, it's not traditional and it doesn't fit for my practices. So um, I prefer to use either my coach candles, which I sell in my shop under conjure candles. And um, you can see the size of these. Um, they're, they give you some room for inscribing. They're sturdy. They're not like um, a taper where you have to like balance it on there. It stands up by itself because it's got a wider diameter. Um, and um, this will last me about a week, burning it a few hours each day. But most of the services I do are for two weeks. So I use this size. I wouldn't use black, um, not on a honey jar. Um, I would use black on a on a you know vinegar jar or sour jar or salt jar or a you know ice jar or something like that so but this size is great because this will last you two weeks they are virtually dripless and i would use it in pink or yellow orange green maybe white typically i would use pink the when i do these services for a client they're um, typically for love so I would use pink I don't red is more for like sex and passion and lust and unless that's what I'm working on specifically for for that client then I, then I would use the red one but um, pink is more relationship wise and love and nurturing and um, fostering those feelings and getting those emotions to develop which is typically what my clients are looking for when I'm doing these um, yellow could be for um, if you're looking for an opportunity, employment, um, orange is for, you know, open roads. If you have anything that you're trying to overcome with your honey jar, honey jars aren't just used for love. They can be used to sweeten any, any circumstance. So any circumstance that you need a little extra help with that you want to sweeten in your favor, that's what you would use a honey jar for. Um, green, green for prosperity. You could use that. Um, so you have your, your jar and your candle set up. You're probably going to want a plate to go underneath it in case your candle drips. Um, then inside, I would typically put, I always start with, um, let's, say, let's say I'm doing this one for um, a relationship. I would put two cowries in. I would put two lodestones. I would put star anise. I would put cinnamon sticks. And then I would add some honey. I have um, a friend who keeps bees, so I use his honey because it's local and it's, um, it's really good quality. So I prefer to use things like that when I can. So I use his honey. I also add 
um, sugar to my jars for extra sweetening. Um, I will also add syrup because syrup moves more quickly than honey. When you pour it, it pours more quickly. So this will speed up your jar. I also add iron filings um, as I think this, this, for me, this feeds the jar and it feeds the lodestones that are in it. I also add coffee beans because that caffeine speeds up our workings. Um, I would write a, uh, a name paper or a petition and put that in the jar. I would dress that, put that in the jar. Um, I usually add some sort of hard candy. Some people prefer to leave them wrapped. Some people don't. Um, I prefer to put in, I was always taught to use lifesavers or another brightly colored heart candy. Um, so, and it, how you, you know, how you want to layer it depends. Uh, the order in which I just gave you is pretty much the order in which I do things. Um, and some people, you know, you're going to seal it up and then, uh, you know, burn your candle on top. Um, some workers like to use the tea lights because, um, there was talk of like, um, it's a big deal for some workers that it warms up the inside of the jar. So like the tea light is closer to the, the actual, you know, boundary of the jar. So it's like, you know, supposed to warm up the contents. Um, that actually, it, th there's not any candle that's going to heat up the inside of this jar because by the time your candle burns down to where the wick has created is warming the wax close enough to this the only thing that's going to get warm is like the lid of this jar it's not going to warm anything in it so the whole candle warming the inside of the jar thing the in the contents and like you know uh and i can understand why you would want to warm it up to sort of you know get things moving and add that energy to it and add warmth to it but um a candle's not going to do that so i that's it's a great theory but it doesn't work so that's not i don't really buy into that um if you want to warm it up i have heard of people putting them in like personal coffee warmers like a or like a little hot plate you know putting them on there just make sure you watch it so you don't heat it up too much because it will crack um i wouldn't recommend microwaving it especially something like this it has a metal lid so if you're using a mason jar or anything like that you don't want to put that in the microwave because of the metal lid and I wouldn't, you know, even if you do put it in the microwave and you have something that's microwave safe, I wouldn't do it for really long because you're going to get a boil over of that honey. Um, so um, I don't personally do that. I don't do the warming up thing and mine have worked just fine. People complain that they work slowly. I don't really find that to be true. Um, any working that you do, you need to give it, I mean, at the very least a month to start seeing work. Uh, happening you have to figure that when you are doing a when you're doing a working you're asking the spirits and the your deities and your ancestors to rearrange everything in your life up to that has caused your life to be at this point you have to and if the especially if another person's involved they have to rearrange all that too so that's I mean environmental factors for that person person emotional factors for that person physiological factors for that person they're rearranging all of this to get this back on the track that you wanted on because they're answering your request. So, I mean, that doesn't happen like that. And anybody who promises you that or guarantees you that or says they can do that is full of it. Um, I say workings for complete, full, full circle where you want to be, um, you know, can be up to up to a year. So, um, anybody who thinks they're going to do a honey jar and, you know, they're going to have results within the week, um, it doesn't work like that for anything. So people are way too, um, impatient and expect a lot to happen in a very short amount of time. And a lot is happening, but that's the reason it takes a while is because a lot's happening. So, um, so that's a few things that I add to my honey jars that are not super traditional ingredients. If it's um, something that's like for an open road uh, honey jar or for employment, I would even add some saltpeter because saltpeter has that sort of like boom gum powder effect. So um, I would even add that in there. Um, the candy, the sugar, the coffee, and the syrup. 
are four really big factors for me. Also, if you're doing one for prosperity or employment, the chocolate coins that you get, I get them around Hanukkah, the gelt. It's called gelt because I'm Jewish. Um, so when you get the gelt, um, that's a great thing to put in there. They also sell them around Mardi Gras, the chocolate covered uh, coins. So yeah, so I hope that about covers it. Thanks for watching, guys. And maybe I'll touch on some more of this later. My shop is www.shop.conjuredcardia.com. And I hope to talk to you soon. Feel free to share the video and leave me some comments about what you'd like to see. Blessings.